All right, I think uh, it's a good time to uh, to begin. So I'm going to kick things off, Tom. All right. Fantastic. All right. So I'd like to welcome the audience uh, to our thought leadership discussion today on enhancing digital identity from the device up. We would like to begin sharing the key takeaways from this informative session, which includes how device intelligence enhances both onboarding and transaction KYC, and it's supporting a global array of mobile and online devices. Improving your bottom line with device insight with its benefit that enhances digital profiling, combats fraud, and brings trust to every online experience. Which then leads to the importance of layering diverse technologies, utilizing a multi-factor verification and authentication service to automate risk mitigation and to meet KYC demands. To the impact businesses have seen by implementing such technologies. Now, as we lead into this discussion, I'd like to quickly introduce your host. I am Nolan Bolasan, CEO and co-founder of Forstop. And joining us today is Tom Pack, Executive Vice President for Ivation, who leads the global sales team. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Owen. Appreciate it. So kicking off, online engagement. So this day and age, everyone globally will interact online on a device. So whether you're logging into a social network, maybe it's media consumption or you're window shopping online and then hitting that buy now button. You are passing information and interacting on hardware. So for instance, everyone right now on, in this call is on a device of some sort as we are speaking today. So hence, these devices become a vital component to day-to-day -day engagement leading to one's digital DNA. Now, here are figures supporting global online engagement. We see countries with hundreds of millions, even billions of internet use. This is massive, so much data, look at that. One in five people in 30 days will buy goods or services. The time spent online, three to six hours a, uh, hours a day. I mean, I barely got five hours of sleep last night uh, before this webinar. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the top activities, online shopping, banking, finance related, video games, likely from being purchased in an app, or even having its own in-app revenue potential. Huge, right? The amount of financial and profile information, not to mention customer behavior that people pass often and globally. Now, I'm gonna hand this to Tom in a second, but as you can see on this slide, not every experience may just be positive and can lead to loss, both to the merchant and from the consumer perspective as well. So Tom, I'm going to hand it for you to, uh, for the online banking uh, key trends. Thanks, Owen. It's uh, great to be a part of this presentation. As it relates to financial services, there are several trends and challenges that have arisen due to digital transformation. For example, in the past few years, over 5,000 new fintechs have opened up, and the traditional means of conducting financial transactions is no longer brick and mortar. Digital banking has become the preferred means of doing business. The common theme in digital is that all transactions originate from what? a device, especially mobile, for the traffic that Iovation has seen in 2019 for, for, from financial institutions year to date, which is about 1.6 billion transactions, 58% of that is coming from the mobile device. Other areas that are affecting the financial sector are data breaches. According to the 2019 Javelin report, breaches are up 45%, and there are over 1.3 million identity theft victims in 2018. That means personal information, credit card information, other data is available on the dark web for sale, meaning that synthetic ID, identity theft, and credit card fraud are all on the rise. There's also com compliance drivers such as GDPR and the protection of personal information, and PSD2 with strong consumer authentication requirements. They're pushing financial service companies to make regulatory adjustments on how they do business online. And the final item that's driving the market are seamless user experience. That's a requirement. In a survey of millennials, the new generation fueling the digital economy, 83% of them said that they would switch banks for a better digital experience. So now there's a requirement for financial institutions to balance security and convenience. Next slide. Just to elaborate more on fraud trends, every year Iovation publishes the Iovation Reputation Report. And you can see a massive increase in fraud types, especially around synthetic ID, account takeover, identity theft, and identity mining. The green represents all industries, while the red represents the increase in fraud types, increase in these fraud types in financial services. 
Again, this is a result of the massive increase in data breaches and fraudsters combining different personal information to create synthetic IDs and are using all that information for identity theft. Account takeover is also on the rise because credential stuffing through bot-related tags and advanced phishing techniques capturing data. Next slide. So no single fraud solution can stop all fraud. A layered approach is required, and it's important to understand the individual as well as the device and associated devices that are trying to conduct the transaction. And a way to do this is to combat fraud through layering device ID and reputation with advanced global KYC verification and a fully automated anti-fraud anti tool. Specifically, when it comes down to device identification and recognition, it's important to choose a solution that can recognize all device types, laptops, workstations, mobiles, and even gaming consoles. And why is that important? Some device recognition tools are more focused on the mobile or the laptop. Digital transactions come from all sorts of devices. For iOvation, we've recently seen fraudulent transactions coming from Xbox devices in Canada. Recognizing devices is one thing, understanding the reputation of the device is something different, and I'll cover that shortly. Device intelligence is a core foundational fraud defense tool. Understanding device intelligence does more than just complement AML KYC compliance checks, but maximizes fraud mitigation for everyone who engages online. Next slide. As it pertains to device reputation and intelligence, there are several factors that should be looked at. It shouldn't only be, has this device been associated with some sort of fraud in the past? We should understand the behavior of the device. In other words, has this device been used to conduct an unusually large amount of transactions in a short period of time? Do we understand the geolocation? Do we understand associated devices? And has there been ev invasion, uh, evasion attempts? If the solution has a consortium or a shared network, What's the magnitude of the database? And does it see traffic from virtually every country in the world? Can subscribers of the tool place evidence to share their device experience with other subscribers in the network? And can the provider tell you with 100% assurance um, the reputation of the device? In other words, has that device been associated to identity theft or credit card fraud, loan default, or other relevant reputational issues that are important to your business? Next slide. Just to expand, contextual device reputation is relevant. For example, in financial services, you'd want to understand if a device is associated to account takeover or credit card fraud, but chat abuse in a dating site is not necessarily an indicator of financial fraud. That's why context is important in fraud decisioning. Next slide. Other things to consider when looking at a device solution. Can it provide multi-domain recognition? Device solutions often, often apply third-party JavaScript to identify devices. But what happens if a user's browser blocks third-party JavaScript? The device solution should have a method to recognize devices leveraging first-party JavaScript as well, or JavaScript that's delivered from your domain. The benefit of doing this is to improve device recognition rates, gain more visibility into device behavior and anomalies, and lower false positive rates. Other questions, can the device solution associate devices through common account access and identify possible fraud rings? Can the solution recognize devices even when the user is trying to evade detection, such as coming in through a proxy, a VPN, an emulator, or a Tor browser? There are many different things to consider. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to consumer authentication. Earlier in the presentation, we talked about balancing security and convenience. So how do we ensure a frictionless experience yet provide a means of stopping account takeover at the same time? A device can be used as a frictionless authentication solution by pairing the device to an account so the device becomes a possession factor of authentication. To the user, it's invisible. They believe they're logging in with their username and password, but in reality, checks are being made to see if the device has been paired with the account and comparing hundreds of attributes with other combinations of device identifiers to ensure that the device is one that has authorized for access. Key things to be aware of when choosing a device authentication solution. Does it incorporate machine learning so that the consumer doesn't have to go through repairing a device when normal changes to the device occur, such as wiping cookies or when OS versions are upgraded? Can the device be paired to an account at the moment the new account has been created or does the device pairing have to take a manual effort from the user? Can the device authentication tool be managed through the same uh, platform as a fraud tool? 
Can the device solution be used as an adaptive authentication tool to invoke a stronger authentication request when a high risk scenario is presented? Next slide, please. So let's go through uh, a customer journey and we'll do this left to right since the slide isn't automated. Um, when a user goes to create an account, conduct a device reputation check to see if there's been any relevant fraud activity coming from the device. If not, conduct a KYC and ID check. Pending all things pass, a new account is created. Upon new account creation, the device-based authentication tool can automatically pair the device to the user or it can do it manually. Now the next time the user goes to log in, they think they're using username and password, but the consumer authentication tool should be checking geolocation, device attributes, device integrity to see whether that device has been rooted or jailbroken. And all of this is invisible to the user. If validated, the user's logged into the account. For low risk transactions, such as account balance checks, the user can go on conducting business. But for high risk transactions, such as address change, payment withdrawal, or funds transfer, the solution should conduct an additional reputation check in other words, has this device been associated with any additional fraud since the last time it's logged in and invoke a stronger authentication check through a multi-factor authentication tool? Next slide. So really the bottom line is to improve your bottom line by using a layered approach uh, against fraud prevention. If a known fraudster comes back to you, um, comes back using a different identity, either on the same device or an associated device, the placement of evidence and device associations ensures that you can immediately stop further activity. The Device Reputation Consortium enables fraud professionals to work together to catch and stop fraudsters. Evidence helps your business catch fraudsters known to you and in turn, stop fraudsters that are known to other subscribers on the network. Through business rules, you can build profiles of potentially risky devices based on characteristics or based on IP addresses associated with evidence of fraud and abuse. And evidence data provides insight that helps you determine which rules are more predictive of fraud and enables you to fine tune your rules dynamically. So protect transactions against fraudsters as you make your digital transformation. Leverage contextual fraud evidence shared across a global network with a device reputation solution to stop, to stop fraudsters in an automated fashion through a layered approach. And most importantly, enable your good prospects and customers to conduct business frictionlessly. With that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Nolan to talk about global KYC and multi-factor verification and authentication. Thanks, Tom, that was fantastic. Thanks. So what complements device ID technology? It's having confidence on the information passed by the consumer and having verifiable enriched data for merchants to make the right decisions. So that's leading to our next point, multi-factor verification service. Now, the following are the best practice methods that merchants apply. Many will use several of these to a certain degree. Now, a multi-factor service with its KYC data profiling and layer technologies will improve your decision making, wrapping up the use of these methods, but smart and efficiently. Building out your KYC and risk process does not have to be scary or painful and not as costly as one expects because the first thing that comes to mind, it's multiple integrations, multiple invoices and agreements, various minimums, not to mention with all that data and requirements, figuring out how to put everything together and ensuring the safety of all that data. So where in the end, businesses just go with bare minimum. Now, speaking of integration and bare minimum essentials, we see here that many businesses will lean on IT to help solve fraud and customer pain points. So what is the solution? That will be a multi-factor or data aggregation provider, which we like to call a VAS or verification as a service. Now, a VAS delivers a suite of data sources covering hundreds of data types globally. That data is flexible and on demand. So as your business expands, now along with device technology, this completes that digital profiling and automation that businesses long for. So maintaining compliance requirements and staying on top of fraud. Now, the benefits working with an aggregator or VAS. You will have access to hundreds of data sources from validation, so meaning sensitive information, to verification, so PII, or personally identifiable information, to authentication services. Now, this data is global and quick to market. 
as these aggregators are maintaining and growing collaborative partnerships to stay on top of friend, uh, trends, so you don't have to. We're talking best-in-class partners. Now, all this with just a single integration, so making it IT efficient, and of course, cost effective. Having all this data is great, but it's even better is have technology to manage it. So it's not just about being a data broker, but being a smart risk tool as well. So being in the know, for instance, immediately understanding where your conversion rates things occur, or where you might be lacking in compliance or sudden fraud spikes. So from this, understanding when to ask for more or less from the right consumers. So what is a smart risk tool? It should contain a rules engine, one that is manageable and instant, one that allows you to adapt to trends. Having the ability to set thresholds to automate decision flow or system action, which could mean declining a purchase, for instance, or allowing for higher value goods. Maybe it's throttling or allowing for more services or payment instruments. Perhaps triggering a two-factor authentication or to manage KYC document requests for regulatory requirements. This then leads to automated data driven by data science to optimize outcome while promoting cost efficiency. Now, on top of these, this risk tool should allow you to monitor trends at all business endpoints. So meaning at onboarding or during payment. If it's payment, are we talking incoming or outgoing funds? If it's onboarding, are we, are we speaking at merchant onboarding or consumer account creation? By understanding where these trends occur, the goal is better decisions, real-time decisions. Now, having access to hundreds of data sources, you need smart KYC tactics. It should be able to uh, adapt, predict, and act. So when it comes to KYC data, what are your goals? Is it two plus two? Is it age verification? An aggregator must be flexible to facilitate to your needs and do it with efficiency. Now, a type of efficiency includes using cascading or waterfall logic or in parallel. So again, are we talking two plus two verification? That means calling out multiple sources at the same time. Or you might want secondary or third backup to be pulled depending on the previous results. It's also about directing that verification to the best partners, those world-class partners for best match rates and all again in real time. Aggregators will use these tactics to fully enrich an outcome to meet your risk and compliance appetites. Now, the following page echoes a smart rules engine that was mentioned earlier, where you want a system to make use of the data intelligently at all points of interaction. Again, easily configurable and promotes real-time decisions. And most importantly, minimizing friction. Look at that pain point. 69% of businesses are concerned with the number of incorrect declined customer transactions. That means loss. Aggregators are self-aware. So if you intended to expand to another market or suddenly a new market trend hits your business, you want to be sure that your KYC and risk system adapts accordingly. This comes with automated data. So a couple of foundations of this includes the ability to identify abnormal activity, so creating awareness. The ability to gain hindsight on demand. So when you're deciding to hit a new market, you know, what if I change this rule or that score? What kind of results could I expect? Or if I enable or disable this data source? An aggregator will allow you to forecast customer friction and risk load, so thus being more prepared and expanding with confidence. So let's recap and go over the benefits. Device ID. So device intelligence and device reputation are an important component of your layered fraud prevention approach. To reiterate, contextual device reputation and understanding the types of fraud associated to devices should be evaluated. So it's the ability to link devices through common account access. The ability to recognize devices across multiple domains should all be considered. And for device-based authentication, pairing a device to an account, having machine learning components, and checking device behavior and anomalies should all be requirements. For global KYC, an anti-fraud aggregator, the benefits include reducing negative transactions, so thereby reducing chargebacks and the need to refund, dropping that bad exposure. What happens then? You end up boosting your good traffic. You feel confident. You offer more to your consumers, and they're going to respond positively. And triple win. You save money, and you save time. You're, you're empowered 
uh, to maximize results and cutting noise. So allowing you again to focus on growth. So thank you all uh, for taking the time today to participate in our webinar, Enhancing Digital Identity from the Device Up. Uh, we truly hope you captured your thoughts that you leave the session knowing that using a multi-layer approach is fundamental for building out digital DNA efforts, reducing fraud and friction, and encouraging, again, business growth. So please note to the audience, you will receive an email today following the presentation. So if you have any questions or would like to schedule a personal one-on-one -on -one demo tailored to your device ID intelligence needs or enhanced KYC and risk mitigation, you will have the opportunity to do so from that email, or please contact us directly from visiting either forstop.com or ivation.com. Cheers.